With the new generation of Ryzen 7000 CPUs comes a whole new host of motherboards with varying features, connectivity, different IOs and form factors. But how do you know which motherboard is right for you? Thankfully we've rounded up some of the most popular options to decipher which are the best buys and which are not, and how you can understand what features to look for in an X670 and X670e motherboard, and at what price. Let's do this! eBuyer and Asus are running a promotion you do not want to miss. Purchase an eligible Asus ROG Swift OLED gaming monitor from eBuyer.com and receive a wireless peripheral for free. This includes the ROG Swift OLED PG42UQ and PG48UQ, which we recently gave a glowing recommendation. And you can choose their new top-end wireless headset, a wireless keyboard, or a wireless mouse to supercharge your setup. Get all the details and pick yourself up a new monitor at the first link below. Now let's start by addressing probably one of the easiest and biggest questions people will be asking. What exactly is the difference between X670 and X670e? Now to do that, we're going to take a look at the Gigabyte Aorus X670 Elite AX. The E chipset stands for Extreme and was touted before the launch at providing more overclocking, more PCIe bandwidth, and just overall taking things to that slightly higher level. But if I'm being honest with you, the difference between these boards is actually a lot bigger than that. As as you can see from the bottom here, it says that this board is PCIe 5.0 ready, but for NVMe only. That means only one of our M.2 slots support PCI Generation 5, and the PCIe slot is Generation 4. That's potentially inhibitive for next-gen GPUs, which may require PCI Gen 5 not only for bandwidth, Nvidia's RTX 40 series doesn't, but AMD's RDNA 3 lineup may well require it. The PCI Gen 5 slot can deliver a lot more power to your graphics card than the PCI Gen 4 slot of last generation. Now, that's not to say that X670 non-E motherboards are inherently bad value, as that wouldn't be the case. They still support DDR5 like all of our other motherboards today, and come with strong I.O. configs that allow for plenty of expansion and lots of connectivity. If we take a look at the Aorus Elite AX board, it's got integrated Wi-Fi, you've of course got your AM5 socket front and center, providing support for Ryzen 7000 and likely Ryzen 8 and 9000, AMD's great for backwards compatibility. You've obviously got your RAM DIMM slot, so you've got your PCI Gen 5 M.2. PCI Gen 5 M.2s are not even out yet to the mainstream market, so great to see this from a future-proofing point of view. And then a further three M.2 slots under this heatsink. You do lack more advanced features like a Q-code LED display, which will give you the error codes in numeric form for easy debugging. But on the rear I.O., you'll see you retain lots of nice features. USB-C 20 gigabit, USB-A 3.2, so USB Gen 2 3.2, Wi-Fi 6 and plenty of USB 2 ports. The Ethernet is 2.5 gigabit as well, which is great to see, though this board does lack any optical audio out, showing where Gigabyte are perhaps making a few cost savings on this design. If you're opting for a Ryzen 9 or 7, I would recommend avoiding the non-E chipsets and picking up something with that extreme capability that allows, of course, for PCI Gen 5 graphics cards. That's something that on a high-end build makes a lot of difference. But for those looking at the likes of an RTX 3070, 70 Ti with a Ryzen 5, this chipset is going to be absolutely fine. Now, rather interestingly, some brands have actually opted to avoid the X670 non-E chipset entirely, and one of those is Asus. On the table here, I've got a couple of their boards, but we actually flew out to Germany of all places a few weeks ago to take a look at the full range, and I've got loads more in the office. This is their Jean M80X and their X670E i Mini ITX board, and right now, these are two of the best smaller form factor options on the market. Other manufacturers have been quick to launch their larger scale motherboards, so it's great to see Asus do something a bit different. Now Asus are one of those brands who have avoided that X670 noni design. Their cheapest X670 board is an X670e Prime. It comes in for like $349 MSRP, which is pretty good. Their latest price and availability for all boards will be linked below for different regions and retailers. Obviously, they deem the X670 Noni chipset to be too restrictive, and perhaps want to avoid a litany of consumer queries when their PCI Gen 5 graphics cards launch, and users can't pop them in their existing, still expensive Asus motherboard. Now, the Micro ATX form factor here is an interesting one, because of course it does create some restrictions in terms of form factor, but not nearly as interesting as the Mini ITX derivative. Now, we're going to be putting together a small form factor build very soon, so get subscribed for that. 
But taking a look at this Asus ITX design certainly comes up with a few revelations. Of course, the overclocking support is going to be far more muted as there's not enough physical space to allow for loads of VRM power phases and lots of cooling. But they do do a great job of stacking M.2 slots to still allow you plenty of options to install M.2 SSDs. And you do, of course, slim yourself down to two RAM DIMMs rather than four. That's because, once again, there's physically not enough space. Flip around to the rear I.O. and Asus have done a good job. You can see how the IO does grow over our non-E design from Gigabyte with 40 gigabit USB-C. Uh, you've also got DisplayPort on that port as well. You've then got 10 gigabit USB 3.2 Gen 2 and 2.5 gig Ethernet. The main one really is going to be those USB-C ports. You'll also find the inclusion of Wi-Fi 6E on this design as standard. The new Ryzen chips do have an eco power mode which helps for ITX builders, but if you're looking at a small form factor system, really do beware. You will sacrifice some features purely because there's not enough space for them. One thing Asus do include though is an add-in USB-C card which just uses USB-C as a connection format and allows you to plug in your front panel cables, more fan headers, by actually creating raised PCBs on top of the motherboard. A very innovative design from Asus and I love this stacked design of our M.2 slots, but you definitely aren't going to get the same level of expansion and usability on a small form factor board. Now one thing that you might notice to be particularly prevalent from our boards today is the number of high-end designs. We're talking really really expensive boards and the MSI X670E Ace and the couple of options on my left from Aorus are prime examples. With boards like this you will gain of course your Q-code LED displays, plenty of M.2 slots, PCIe Gen 5 and a strong IO. Heck I think this X670E Aorus Extreme even has a screen on which you can customize. Power phases are also immense on boards like these. You've got 22 phases on the Aorus Extreme with 25 phases on the MSI X670E Ace. And this isn't even their highest end board. They also offer an X670E Godlike, which costs a fortune. You probably shouldn't buy it unless you've got more money than cents. A little bit of a middle ground is probably the Aorus X670 Master. Now this design still gives you really great power delivery. So you've got 20 phases rather than 22 and 20. You've got PCI Gen 5 for your SSD and your GPU. You've also got features on this board that we've seen across the range of buttons that you can use to release your PCI slots from easier GPU removal, something which will become particularly important with the size of next-gen cards. Getting at the fiddly PCI clip is going to become that bit more difficult. Alongside these motherboards, you've also got the usual budget range from MSI that slims down your PCB, and the Asus Prime and Tough Gaming ranges, which once again help on the feature side of things. If I've got to be honest, the MSI X670E Ace is one of my favourite boards in terms of raw performance, but I think the Extreme motherboard from Aorus gives us a little bit more by way of expansion and connectivity at a slightly better value price point. Of course, moving over to the Asus side of the equation, you've also got their typical high-end motherboards. With their 22-phase VRM-powered Crosshair X670E Extreme and the standard ROG and ROG Strix boards alongside the Prime and Tough designs. Asus have definitely given you quite a lot of choice at launch and I expect other manufacturers to follow suit very shortly. So then this kind of raises the question, these are all pretty good motherboards in their own right and you can read full reviews of all of them on geekawatt.com for the super nitty gritty. But what features should you be looking for? The first is if you're shopping for a high-end board, be aware that you can get 25 phase power design options as that will allow of course for better overclocking. Look at your IO, make sure you've got the USB-C connectivity you want, especially if you want DisplayPort over USB-C for features like a USB-C monitor and look at the bandwidth. Not all USB-C ports are built equal. You've got 10, 20 and 40 gigabit designs with the latest gen. Select boards also have USB 4 connectivity in the form of USB-C once again for that higher bandwidth. Something we've seen for example on our Asus ITX board but not so much on some of our lower end Gigabyte X670 non-E options. Though that is of course for the price very understandable. You want to look out for Q-code error displays as well or or hardware debug lights. Q-code error displays in particular at this price point should be a given. These allow for far easier debugging, something you'll want to be able to do when you're using a new Ryzen CPU, as when they boot up for the first time, they do tend to boot cycle a bit and can take a while to get that memory up and running. 
You also want to take a look at motherboards and check that their memory support is pretty unified. You want to be able to install as much of the latest DDR5 as possible, even if you're not going to be using it from day one. Additional features to look for include the provision of M.2 slots. Massive credit goes to the Aorus X670E Extreme for its four M.2s, of which your top one is, of course, PCIe Gen 5. And I like how MSI have gone to a particular effort to separate their Lightning Gen 5 port up to the right-hand side of their motherboard. You'll also notice an auxiliary six pin power connector next to your motherboard cable on certain designs for increased power delivery and really consider if you're looking at the x670 lineup of motherboards whether x670e is worth the additional cost i'd argue once you get into x670 non-e territory that the new extreme b series chipset which is likely to be cheaper than the x670 non extreme version will be a better shout for you you also want to look at general usability features how much attention of motherboard manufacturers paid to the design does it have have an easy removal clip to allow for much easier removal and installation of your graphics card and has it got shielding around the GPU PCI slot something which a couple of years ago was arguably not all that important and now is going to make a massive difference with the size and power of these next gen RTX 40 series and upcoming rumored RDNA 3 GPUs the final point really and it might sound like the most obvious but take a look at what headers are on the motherboard everything from fan headers to USB 3 headers to USB type c headers and finally usb 2 headers james usb 2 headers what what year are you living in well if you're gonna pop a lot of rgb accessories coolers that can be controlled through windows power supplies that connect to your system they're all going to use that usb 2 interface and while splitters and hubs are available make sure you've got two or three of these on your motherboard so you can plug in an iq controller for corsair your power supply for smart wattage monitoring all things that are going to become more important when it comes to those more power hungry next gen g use. I've definitely got to give a little bit of praise to the Asus ITX and Micro ATX form factors for their options at smaller sizes. MSI's ACE board has proven to perform spectacularly in our testing, while Gigabyte's X670 non-E motherboard is definitely worth considering if you're building a system now with a current gen GPU that doesn't even know what PCIe 5 is and doesn't care less whether it's got it or not. As I say, for full reviews of all the boards, check out the links below. Latest pricing and availability, of course, will be linked at those affiliate links in the description too. Get subscribed to see more from me. Thanks for tuning in. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.